Welcome to Digital Asset News, take your top stories in crypto and break it down into bite-sized pieces. Today, this is the thumbnail suggests CNBC got it right, and it really was a, a crypto nightmare in relation to Coinbase and customer support as a certain individual lost a million dollars worth of cryptocurrency. So we'll talk about that story. I'll also talk about a, a new strategy I'm implementing, talk about the reasons for lagging altcoins, and uh, we'll finish up with a little news from the Bank of England uh, being a little bit bullish on crypto. Eh. And also uh, what Kevin O'Leary says is to how we can hit 100K Bitcoin. So we'll go over all those things, but first take a look at the markets. So today is one of those days, it's a pullback. And we've had a pretty magnificent run since the beginning of October. We knew Q4 was gonna be pretty good, hasn't disappointed so far, but for every run up, there has to be a little bit of pullback. And that's what we have right here. So we're at 2.28 trillion, almost 2.3, give or take, a couple hundred billion, whatever. And uh, we've got uh, the daily sentiment right now is 50 over 100. People are kind of, there's a little bit of ambivalence because we don't really know where we're going. I, I feel like we can, we're going to go in a certain direction. I think Q4 is going to be great. And there's a lot of indicators to, to say where we are going. But uh, you have to realize crypto is pretty volatile and that's just how it is. And the thing that's odd to me right now is that usually when Bitcoin runs up and there's a pullback and then it kind of flows into alts. Well, right now, you got Bitcoin in the last 24 hours, it is down 4%, but Ethereum is down. The only one that's up really is, is Binance coin, Cardano's down, XRP is down, Solana's up 3% or 5%, which is amazing because it's been uh, kind of tanking the last week or so. And then uh, everything else is pretty much in the red for the last 24 hours. I mean, except for uh, Axie Infinity, never disappoints. 5% for Cosmos and just everything's just red, red, red. So the question then is, why are these altcoins lagging? So we're going we're gonna to take a look at that, but first... Let's take a look at what I feel is a, is a pretty good story, and it's a it's a cautionary tale of what not to do. And uh, this came about. Uh, this was from uh, CNBC. I think it was Squawk Box. Yeah. And what they did is they just said, "I'm just going to play the first section real quick, and then uh, I'll just paraphrase everything." So take a listen to this. It's safe. This was something that uh, Becky was alluding to in the last segment. Customers of Coinbase, the country's largest crypto platform are angry with the company's customer support, which is supposed to provide help, but it's just led to more frustration. Here's Eamon Javers with a CBC investigation, Crypto Nightmare. I was kind of like panicked, to tell you the truth. Eric and Molly Richardson say they saved nearly $1.1 million worth of cryptocurrency in a Coinbase account. But then in July, Eric got an alert on his phone. The message said someone had logged onto their account. Eric clicked on the text, logged in, and soon received an email that their two-factor authentication, which verifies security settings, had been chained. Okay, so then it's gonna go on for three minutes and they're gonna talk about how awful Coinbase customer support is. Look, I'm no fan of Coinbase, it's just the truth. But uh, in this situation, and also, I don't know if you knew this, but they now have a phone line that you can call and say, hey, you know, my, my uh, account has been hacked. But it's kind of funny because in this video, they actually do that and the guy calls up and they're like, sorry, I can't help you uh, call or just uh, send us an email and we'll, we'll get this rectified. And he's like, I've already lost a million bucks. But anyhow, when you're taking a look at this, in all honesty, it, it is a nightmare if you have to lose a million dollars. But I'm just going to be honest with you right now. Um, that's his fault. And I know that's not very popular. And uh, of course, he's probably not too too happy with with this situation. But in all honesty, I mean, when somebody, this is the, this is the problem. And it's because of, of education and, or lack thereof, because this is a whole new asset class. There's a lot of different rules. And that text message that he got where he logged in and they said, oh, you know, it just must be uh, Coinbase. And then he logged in, gave him the credentials and those hackers took it and they got into his account. I can guarantee that uh, when they did that, he probably didn't have, uh, it says two-factor authentication was changed. I'm pretty sure he probably didn't have uh, the Google uh, authenticator on. I'm pretty sure he didn't have like a, like a, a Yubi key. I'm pretty sure, and it talks about in the video, he didn't have anything in cold storage. So essentially what he did was he kept a million dollars plus on an exchange and uh, thought, well, it should be okay. And this is the problem. So like in this situation, again, it's his fault, but I can understand why these things happen because people just don't know like, oh, this is an asset. This is a stock. This is what I'm going to, and they don't, they don't really get it. So, uh, for this whole story can be summed up like this. It is a nightmare because I mean, to get any kind of help, 
uh, to actually call up Coinbase and say, hey, things have been changed. Lock my account right now so they can't take anything else out because, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time for them to do it. Once you get that, you should be able to call. You should be able to do something to get in there, but it just didn't happen. Again, so what do you do? But really what it comes down to is this. You're going to have to, you're going to have to uh, have some education and you're going to have to do your due diligence. So this thing that spins above my head constantly, see that? Uh, I don't know how often you've watched me, but if you have not gone to my website, Dan Teaches Crypto, it's 100% free. There is no hidden things like, oh, we're, we're, we're behind this paywall or something like that. 100% free. All you got to do is go to danteachescrypto.com. There's a big orange button. It says start learning. You're going to put in your email and name. Just can be your first name. I don't really care. I don't even spam you. I never email anybody unless I add something to the website. You go to the member's home. Here's the course modules. You click on module two safety. And what you can do is just go for, it's right, everything's right there that you that people need. And the only thing that I ask people to do is just share it with a couple of their friends, family, and loved ones. So if they're going to get into crypto, at least you're a little bit prepared and you don't get scammed out by that guy. So that's just a quick PSA. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm sure it is, it is what it is. And that's, uh, that's all I got for that section. So that is that. Now let's talk about a little strategy action. So I had put this out on Twitter yesterday. And I think we talked about it yesterday in the video. And I talked about how I've been dollar cost averaging and buying dips for the last uh, four years. And uh, on, on these huge dips, I buy pretty aggressively. And over time, I feel like Q4 is the time to just kind of sit back. And yes, there is a dip today. I can pick up some other ones at like a discount and keep going. But in all honesty, I've got some other plans and I need to do some other things. And there's different asset classes that I want to get into. One of those being real estate and property. I need to do some other things in that area just to protect myself and my family. Okay. And when I was looking at this, I'm like, you know, if I'm going to just have a holding portfolio, maybe that's 95%. And I can't tell you what to do. This is investment opinion, not investment advice. But for me, I'm like, well, why don't I take like 2 or 3% do a little trading? And then maybe 1% do a little gambling. A little gambling called NFTs. And really what it comes down to is I think there's a lot more revenue or there's a lot more ROI in NFTs and what's going on there. Not for the longevity. I mean, you got to be honest, but this is just so new. This is really ICO 2.0. There are some products that are make it. There are some projects, a lot of projects that will not. So my new strategy is to take like 1% and just kind of get in these NFTs. And that that is the big thing. So uh, I hope that isn't uh, uh, put anybody off, but because uh, I know on my channel, I talk a lot about dollar cost averaging and just holding, and that hasn't changed. You know, I still hold. I mean, if there's a big dip, I will, I mean, a big dip, I will buy again. I will dollar cost average in. But as far as like every single day, I'm not doing that anymore. And uh, when there's new information, I try to uh, adapt and overcome. And uh, this is where we're at. So let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Now let's talk about the reason for the lagging altcoins. And I can kind of sum it up like this. There's so many things going on in NFT and DeFi world. We got to take a look at some data. So if we take a look at, there's this one called DeFi Dashboard. And I'll link the uh, uh, website in the description. But uh, if we take a look at the DeFi locked, $206 billion. $206 billion is locked up in DeFi. And if we switch this over to staking, that's an additional like 10 billion or something like that. Yeah, 11 billion. What a just 11 billion. So if you take a look at, these are all the currencies, the, the crypto, the digital assets where it's locked up into. And one of those uh, being Aave. Aave is huge. Uh, you got 16 billion locked up. Curve, 50, almost 16 billion. MakerDAO, InstaDAO, Wrap Bitcoin, Compound, Convex, PancakeSwap, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, there is that part. I think people really like uh, the, the, the yield farming. They like the whole DeFi. They're really into it. I own Aave myself. I'm never, not never, but I'm not going to let go of Aave for a while. I think it's got a lot of room to run. So there's that part. And then also, if we take a look at what we just talked about as far as NFTs, how do we know how big it is besides of just people talking about it all the time? Well, if we take a look at, there's a website on Etherscan called Gas Guzzlers. And it's just a gas tracker. I'll link it as well. And you can see here that the number one gas guzzler for Ethereum is OpenSea. And OpenSea.io is where you can get uh, a lot almost all of the uh, popular, most popular NFTs, not all, but the most popular Ethereum-based NFTs. I think there's more of an upside in like um, uh, uh, Solanart.io and NCFTC or NC, no, sorry, 
It's uh, CF, CNFT.io and also uh, AVAX for the things that they're minting on their um, on their platform for NFTs. But if we take a look at this, look at this. In the last three hours, they have burned just in the fees a half a million dollars in three hours. And uh, if we can extrapolate that, the second one is Uniswap. And we know how big that is as far as like swapping and, and all the gas. So if we can see where everything is headed, the question is then why is there so many lagging altcoins? Well, in all honesty, I think NFTs wasn't really a thing. And now all of a sudden, everybody's putting all of their funds into these NFTs. So I would think actually that Ethereum would go up a little bit more, but uh, the other altcoins wouldn't as much. But I think that's why we've seen a pretty big boost, almost a 4K for Ethereum. And if we take a look back in history, this is, uh, this is my Discord. And I think yesterday when you guys were hearing those like little beeps, those are probably all the notifications that I had on for Discord. If you want to find anything about what's going on in crypto, I thought crypto Twitter was uh, had some great information. It's all on Discord. And you just got to get comfortable with it. And uh, here's the ones that I have. And this is one from Platypunks. This is from uh, my, my guy, Nick Nick Mancini. Uh, he was the one that uh, turned me on to this, this data points, actually. And he said this was back in October 5th. Look at the, look at the gas guzzling in OpenSea just on October 5th. Today is a 12, so about a week ago. 13%. And then, of course, Uniswap was number three. So when we take a look at these, and then here's some other, other data points. People are talking about how great gaming is and how gaming, NFTs, and everything else. But if we can uh, take it out and go, okay, well, we can break it down between art and collectibles. This is from the block, on-chain analysis versus gaming. Uh, and some of these ones, like, look in August. I mean, yeah, back here, it was gaming, 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 right? Especially right around uh, July or so. But now we see a little bit of a shift. Now it's more the NFT and an NFT craze. And September is pretty halfways, but October, I mean, here we are. So I think that all the money is flowing into this hot new item. And then the question then is, well, how long is this gonna go on, Rob? I can't tell you that, I have no idea. But I can tell you this, we had a great discussion um, over on Alex Maschioli's channel about what could potentially be uh, the end point for this, and Lucas, really smart guy, uh, he was talking about just a macroeconomic view of what's going on in the landscape as far as finance in general, breaking it down into crypto and breaking it down in NFTs. And what he talks about makes a lot of sense. And he's talking about, you know, look, just like the ICOs were hot, he goes, these things will, will roll out. Some projects will rise to the top, but a lot are not going to make it. And I think that's why for these situations, it really is what I call a gamble. And that's why I'm just doing a very small amount. Now, don't do what I do. Do your own research, due diligence, all that good stuff. But I see NFTs being around for quite some time. Watch the video yesterday as to why I think that is. And uh, I think uh, the best is yet to come. And like I said, Q4 is going to be fireworks. Don't know which one it's going to be as far as the projects. But I can tell you NFTs are going to be up there. All right. So that concludes that part. And then let's finish up with a little Bank of England, Kevin O'Leary info. So I love these, these stories. First of all, I'm just gonna, just gonna paraphrase this whole video. It's about 12 minutes. I like Kevin O'Leary. He's a, he's a guy that some people say he's, you know, some people have choice words about Kevin, whatever. One thing I like about Kevin is like, he was a big critic of crypto and he comes out and he's like, hey, I was wrong. You know, I looked at some data, things change. Boy, I was, I was off on this one. I'm gonna go all in. And he's going in pretty heavy. Not all in, he's got like 7%. He actually owns more crypto than he does gold now, which is pretty um, impressive. So on this stage at the SALT uh, conference in New York, he talked about, uh, there was a couple of things. First, he said, look, if we get clarity for these, uh, for all the different projects that are out there, he goes, if that we get clarity, he goes, we're gonna see trillions of dollars flow into it. And he talks about, the Canadian ETF, the Bitcoin ETF, he said in a couple hours, they had billions of dollars of demand. And he goes, and it wasn't from institutions, it was from retail investors who were like, oh, I guess this is safe because it's an ETF, it's been approved by the government, so I guess I can get in. There's a lot of money out there, I think, that is like, you know what, I don't really trust this stuff. And I, and I hear about all these exploits and rug pulls, and even my man Mark Cuban got uh, rug pulled on uh, uh, Iron Finance, so I don't wanna deal with that, but an ETF, that sounds pretty good. I'm used to ETFs, I know that, I've got a lot of money. I'm gonna get into it. So that was uh, uh, one of the things and he said, this is what could propel uh, Bitcoin to 100K. That's pretty much the whole thing. And he talks about Forex traders and how much he despises certain traders. It's kind of funny. I'll link that also in the end, but this 
right here. I wanted to finish up with this because there is a shifting narrative around what is going on as far as crypto. Stable coins, not so much, but as far as like crypto, this is interesting. So this was a quick little article, Bank of England, crypto assets pose limited risks. Here's what they said. The Bank of England says that crypto assets pose limited direct risks to the stability of the country's financial system. They state crypto asset and associated markets and service continues to grow and to develop rapidly. Such assets are becoming increasingly integrated into the financial system. Uh, the FPC, uh, that is the Financial Policy Committee, that's right, considers that financial institutions should take a cautious and prudent approach to any adoption of these assets. I find this a shifting narrative because before it was all like, no, we can't get into this. This is a scam. This is all used for illicit activities. We should never be involved in this. To now it's like, you know what, maybe a little a limited endeavor. And then later, I think in a year or so, like, you know what, we're on board we're going to have you guys come in if you want cryptocurrencies we can we can custody it for you just like the americans are doing and their banks we'll do it over here and uh we all want to be a part of it because they know what's going on they can take a look with the writing on the wall and go we don't want to get blockbustered you can either get beat by them or you can join them so i think this is a departure from what's going on as far as the banks they know what's going to happen and then lastly i want to say this this was a great article because it says the imf the international monetary fund warned that the rising popularity of crypto pose new challenges to financial stability, saying that could reduce the ability of central banks to effectively implement monetary policy and create financial stability risks. So here's what we have. The IMF comes up and says, we don't like what's going on here. This is bad. We can't really do much with this. So we're going to say it's awful. And the banks are like, all right, we'll be on board with that because you know we're kind of uh, in, in cahoots together. And now they're like, wait a second. Everybody wants this stuff, and if we don't get on board, they're just going to leave us behind. Do they really, do we really need banks? In all honesty, I'm just waiting for the first exchange to give me a debit card. Maybe I should go to crypto.com uh, because uh, then my bank is done. I don't need a bank. I can just pay for everything in my debit. As long as they have ACH, I can pay my bills. I'm good to go. So in this situation, IMF, central banks, I think they're separating. We'll see what the fight is with the CBDC. And that is it. So look. <laughs> A lot of information today. If you made it this far, I want to say thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive every single day. But that is it for this one. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.